If you have your copy of God's Word, take it. Let's open it to the book of Mark, Matthew, Mark. It's the second book in the New Testament. That's towards the middle of your Bible. We're going to be in the 8th chapter of Mark, the 1st through the 10th verses. I'm going to read just the first, um, first four. In those days, when, they were again, were there, when there was again a large crowd, and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples and said, I feel compassion for the people because they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come a great distance. His disciples said, where will anyone be able to find enough bread here in this desolate place to satisfy these people? And he asked them, how many loaves do you have? And he replied, seven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus always keeps it simple, doesn't he? We tend to make things difficult, don't we? Well, at least I do. And y'all got to put up with me, so pray for me. Amen. Y'all want to amen that. There are, as of 2024, according to FrontierPartners.org, 8.2 billion people on the earth today. And that's an approximate number. Of those 8.2 billion people, 2.6 billion are Christians who profess Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior. That gives you a net of 5.6 billion souls who have yet to hear or to come to know Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior. And here we see Jesus meeting needs and loving people where they are. Wherever Jesus goes, it, almost every time it begins with, and there was a what? A crowd. There was a large crowd. Church, the first thing I want you to see this day is all of God's creation is hungry. All of God's creation is hungry. Feed them with water. Feed them with bread. But feed them really with the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. That is what we are to give wherever we go. The love, the grace, the mercy and the compassion of Jesus. It costs nothing to be kind. I think a different question, a different way to ask it. So church, are, are you hungry to share the gospel just as hungry as you are to receive it? Are you hungry to take that gospel outside the four walls of this church wherever you go. Because never forget, you may be the only Jesus others may see. People are watching you wherever you go. They're paying attention to how you respond in the victories, but also in the valleys. How are you responding in the valley of the shadow of death? Because even in that valley, you've heard me say this, in order to have a shadow, you've got to have light. And the light of Christ is even with you in the valley. Paving a way out of the valley in his time. Are you hungry to share that gospel just as you're hungry to receive it, but are we hungry enough to go and share it wherever we go? Look down at verses 1 and 3 again. Mark chapter 8, verses 1 and 3. In those days, there was again a large crowd. And they had nothing to eat. And Jesus called his disciples and said, I feel compassion for the people because they have remained with me now three days and they have nothing to eat. 
If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come a great distance. So what did he do? He's got these people. He's like, they're hungry, and I can't send them away. So who does he call? He calls his disciples. He called his inner circle, those whom he trusted most, with a very important task. We've got to do something. They need food. And so he called those he trusted most. And there's a crowd there. Now, in chapter 8, he's feeding the the 4,000. If you go back to chapter 6, he just, a little while ago, not long before, he fed 5,000. That's a lot of people to feed out in the middle of nowhere. And so he says he has compassion on them. If you look at Mark chapter 6, verse 34, when he went ashore, he saw a large crowd. He felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it was quite late, his disciples came and said, this place is desolate and is already, and it's already late. And here's, here's what the disciples say do. And and when they're feeding the 5,000, they said, send them away so that they can go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. Okay, if I were in charge, that's probably what I'd say. Y'all need to go to like McDonald's. I I can't help you. Go. Come back in a little bit, but go. Lunch break. But what, what did Jesus have in both stories? Compassion. He wanted to meet the need of hunger. And he loved them enough to make sure he did that. Now, the feeding of the 5,000 was mostly to a Jewish audience. They were mostly Jews on that day. Get back over to the sermon text this morning. It's the Gentiles. Oh, now that's the other people. We're not supposed to talk to the other people because they're not like us. How are we at feeding other people? How are we at being kind to other people? How are we at loving other people when we go into this world? Do we cross the street when we see someone we don't like? Or do we sit down and love them because they're hurting too? We don't know what they're going through. We don't know their story. What about your pew mate? Somebody needs you to help them carry their burden. Somebody needs you to be compassionate. Somebody needs you to just sit with them. How are we at doing that? Jesus in the middle of nowhere says these people are hungry and we've got to feed them. Christ loves all, no matter who you are. He came For all of us to die on a cross, to be buried, and to rise again to forgive us of our sins. We're going to the launch pad. I was able to make it out for a little bit. I showed up and everybody left. I'm like, well, what does that say about the preacher? Y'all don't like me. But I got there around 10 o'clock, a little bit after. And so I got to have some coffee. They have really good chocolate muffins, by the way. It was like a lot of chocolate. Jolt to my system. And as we sat there, I'm like, so what's going on this morning? They're like, Pastor, we got to pray with, uh, with a couple. Hard story. But what I want you to see is the couple came in for coffee and we gave them Christ. They didn't expect prayer, but they got prayed over that day. Wherever we go, never forget that you may be the only Jesus others may see. And when we look at the other people, we give them bread, we give them water, we give them the greatest story ever told, we give them the hope and solution to their problems, Jesus. When you look at the story of the woman at the well, you know the story, she was a Samaritan, Jesus was a Jew, and so she shows up, at the hottest part of the day, we live in Texas. We don't go outside till 10 o'clock at night to do anything because it's hot. 
But here she comes, and she's carrying the pots. And I can assure you, she comes up over the hill and sees a guy lounging, waiting on her. Like, what is that fool doing here? And all he says is, hey, give me some water. What? Give me some water. She's like, you don't have a ladle to draw with. By the way, you're Jewish, I'm Samaritan. We shouldn't be talking together. We shouldn't, really shouldn't be seen together, yet here we are. And right smack dab in the middle of this story in John chapter 4, verse 13. Jesus says, he says, you know, everyone who drinks of this water, they will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give shall never thirst, but the water that I will give will become in them a well of water, doing what? Springing up to eternal life. That's what you take wherever you go. The water of Christ, the true living water of eternal life. When we go in love, the Jew, the Gentile, the Greek, the Samaritan, the other people. That is our task, to go in love. If you read down through the, the, the love passage in 1 Corinthians, which, by the way, that was not written to two star-crossed lovers who were, you know, drunk with love. It was written to a church in trouble. And it's, it's simple. If I, if I have all these things, I don't care what you've got. If I have, you know, if I speak with tongues of men and angels but don't have love, I'm a clinging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy, know all mysteries and knowledge. And if I have all faith, remove mountain, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. If we don't go in love, if we don't have love in our hearts, the love of Christ, we ain't got nothing. And don't tell my English teacher of a wife I just used a double negative. I'll be in trouble. We must go and we must love because Christ first loved us. Number next. All creation is hungry. Give thanks for whomever the Lord brings in your presence. Because what might you be? The only Jesus they ever see. And they have come to you. Lord, the Lord has brought them to your table. They may come for coffee. You offer them the love of Christ. There was a professor who rose at the very end of the semester. And he said, I spent 12, 14 weeks teaching you all I know about economics. I've, and it's not all, but I've taught you most of it, all, almost all of what I know. And he said, you have a blank sheet of paper. He said, I want you to write your name on that paper, write the date. And he said, there's just one question on the exam. And he said... He said, there's been a great semester, but, but take everything I've taught you and throw it out the window. And they're like, oh, this is going to be tough. And he said, because the one thing it's all about, it's not about numbers, it's about relationships. It's all about relationships. And he said, what is the name of the janitor who cleans this building? And with that, he walked out of the room. And on his way out, he said, put your papers on the desk. I can tell you to this day who the janitor was at Nathan Adams Elementary School in Dallas, Texas, where I went. One of the nicest people ever, Robert Johnston. He was always very kind to me, and I've never forgotten that. Who cleans this church? Do you know who that is? It's all about relationships. And Christ now is here among the Gentiles. Listen to verses 4 through 7. Oh, hold on. Let me get back over to the right book. Y'all going to need therapy. His disciples answered, Where will anyone be able to find enough bread here in this desolate place to satisfy the people? 
And he was asking them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, seven. And he directed the people to sit down on the ground. And taking seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and started giving them to his disciples to serve to them. And they served them. When you look at that, he was meeting the needs of the people. The disciples, they were worried. Your pastor is a worrier. I am Charlie Brown. I worry about everything. I don't act like I do. I bound to the door like I really know what I'm doing. The days I ain't got a clue, people. Just go with it. And give me grace when I mess it up. But when you look at where Christ is, he is meeting the needs of the other people. The Gentiles when he's feeding the 4,000. And so when we look at meeting the needs, one of the things the disciples were worried. You've got someone sitting in the pew next to you who's worried about something in their life. I don't know what you go through. You've got someone who's scared, somebody who's in financial distress, someone who's having a major health concern, somebody who is grieving, somebody's hurting, somebody's wounded. Do you know that about them? Are you helping them carry that burden? Christ is helping people here in the middle of nowhere. They need food. He's meeting that need. He's helping them carry this. Are you helping one another? If we say we're a family, do we know the victories but also the valleys? in people's lives and what are we doing to get with them to get before them on a regular basis it is all about relationships and the main relationship is that with Jesus Christ he will fulfill every need in your life his grace is all sufficient so the disciples they're worried and, you know, Jesus doesn't say, he doesn't say, all right, we, somebody called DoorDash, y'all just hang out or run into town like they did when they were feeding the 5,000. He, just listen to what he says. He, he says, how many loaves do you have? He didn't complain about what he didn't have. Do we know any perpetual complainers? Don't raise your hand and don't point, that's rude. But, I know some people who are gloom and doom. I'm like, oh, here they come. And I can't run, so I've got to tolerate it. And you know you've got people, you've got a person in your head. So mm, on all of you, I love you. But what did Jesus do? He said, well, what he began with what he had. What do you have? Seven loaves. Okay. So what does he do? He turns to the people. And he says... Y'all be seated. So 4,000 people, boom, sit down. Number next, what does he do? He gets it to the Father. He gave thanks for the seven loaves. How are we at giving thanks for what we have instead of complaining about what we don't have? He gave thanks and he asked the Father to bless it. I don't know what he prayed, but it just says he gave thanks. And then he took it and he broke it. And it was multiplied. There was enough. There was enough. He served them. And he used the disciples to serve them. How are we at serving one another? Just because somebody needs us. You have something people need, and that is the hope and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. And you have, what's the number I give y'all? 5.6 billion opportunities to go and share. You can't ever tell me we ain't got an opportunity with that many people who need to know about the love and the grace of Jesus. And right there, that question, how many loaves? The disciples are worried. You know, Scripture says, if we worry, why pray? And if we pray, why worry? How are we at getting to the throne room every day on a regular basis? If we got more to the prayer room and the throne room, we wouldn't worry half as much as we do. We just wouldn't. That main question, how many loaves? He began with what he had.
And when you look at verses 7 and 8, verses 7 and 8, and I'm running out of time. It also says the disciples served them and, and they served the people. And verse 7 says they, they had a few small fish. And after he did what with the, what did he do with the fish? It says he what? Blessed them. He blessed them. He gave thanks and he blessed them. He ordered that to be served as well. And they ate and they were what? Satisfied. Well, what's the question when the disciples were all being whiny, whiny? Verse 4, where will we find enough bread here in this desolate place to what? Satisfy. They didn't become satisfied until Christ blessed it and gave thanks and got it to the Father. That is when we get satisfaction. We've got to stay before the throne room. Why were they satisfied? How were they satisfied? Jesus and Jesus alone. Christ alone. I don't care how much money we have. I don't care how much land we have, how much power we have, what our title is. When you have Jesus, you have all you need and nothing else matters. And I love this. Look at verse 8 again. It says, the first part, and they ate and they were satisfied. Nobody complained. You got 4,000 people and no complaints. I'm sorry. That ain't ever happened in my lifetime. Someone's going to be, well, the fish wasn't good enough or the bread was a little bit stale. Oh, don't get me started. But it says they were satisfied. And then it says they picked up seven large baskets full of what was left over of the broken pieces. They were satisfied and there were leftovers. You have 5.6 billion souls on this planet. General Conference is going on right now in Costa Rica. They went out in the streets of Costa Rica and just started praying with people. Wherever we go, we can pray with somebody. Wherever we go, we can share the hope and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ because people are hungry. 5.6 billion souls. There is always more bread. There is more water. And there is always more Jesus. There is no reason for us not to go. Church, they had a few small fish. And after he blessed them, he ordered these to be served. And they ate. And they were satisfied. They picked up seven large baskets. Well, the baskets, they say, not just a little bitty basket. It was a basket you could fit a human body in. It was a big basket. Seven of them. There is always more. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.